So I was playing this game the other day, and that game was Doom Forever, and it was shit. The end. Oh, come on, what more do you want? I'm pretty sure even those who were scrotum sack spelunkers back in the late 90s would be familiar with this legendary fable. Let's step back a bit to the pre-industrial age of 1998, the year of which Duke Nukem Forever was announced at E3. And it looked fucking awesome. Of course, there was another game that looked predestined to take the world by storm. But what was it called again? My oh my, what can we... Okay, let's stop this. It was Half-Life. And really, you don't need to be Poirot to figure out how Half-Life managed to transcend Earth and all the heavens, and how Duke Nukem managed to spend an entire eternity wallowing in development hell. Half-Life was released, Duke Nukem was not. It wasn't until it was old and leprous and their developer committed suicide was it released. But now it was free, no one wanted it because it was old and leprous and it was full of shit. Which brings us to the post-industrial time of 2011, the year of which the game was actually released. And it was a colossal piece of shit. Has that come across yet? It was fucking shit! Most of the weapons are about as satisfying to use as a Walter gun that discharges warm lady spunk. The graphics look like ass, and the loading times. Holy shit, the fucking loading times. I mean, fucking hell. I never would have thought I'd get around to reading War and Peace, but now I have. Cross that off the bucket list. But hold on, that's not the worst of it. The most arid, most Fetid turd that lieth atop the mountain of shit is the writing. I would not be surprised if the script was written in crayon by a spacky retard. First of all, the comedy. Don't nuke him forever. It could have been the perfect opportunity to provide a satirical commentary on the past decade of gaming. But no. Duke seems to confuse parody with reference. Which is the kind of thing only fuckwits would laugh at. Okay, Crash Course, motherfucker. Comedy 101. Parody versus reference. The difference may surprise you. Now, a parody is taking a song about molesting women and fucking goats and turning it into a grammar lesson that's not only more entertaining than the original song, but it's so educational that my English teacher showed to me in class. No, seriously, that happened. Now, to put it into more technical terms, parody is taking that which is familiar and putting it into silly or satirical situations. This is effective because seeing what we all know and love connected to a joke enhances the joke. Granted, it doesn't necessarily have to be what we love, but still, you get the point. Now, a reference is, say, seeing Jack Sparrow jerking off onto Peter Dinklage. Well, at least that's how the Waynes brothers would define it, but for those of us who aren't talentless hacks, a reference could be, say, a Master Chief helmet sitting on a shelf, and then pointing at it, saying that's the joke. One is not amused! This shit isn't funny! And worst of it is Duke himself, because he's a fucking Mary Sue, a character who's just so perfect in every single fucking way, and is loved by all the pieces of office paper that are the NPCs, and the only antagonist in the story are the ones who hate Duke, and of course they're all dealt with by story's end. And that's why no one makes stories about Mary Sue characters, because they're boring and predictable. And here's the thing, being the perfect character is in itself a character flaw. I mean, Come on, can you think of just one story that revolves around a Mary Sue character? Well, possibly the New Testament? or edgy. Anyway, getting back to the writer, I actually discovered something rather interesting when I went out of my way to find out who wrote this piece of shit. Oh god, not the writer. Fuck no, that would be relevant. No, did you know that Yahtzee Croshaw, creator of the Zero Punctuation Internet video series, was actually asked by 3D Realms to write an audition script for the game? And he did. And 3D Realms got that, and they said it was fucking brilliant. It was the funniest script out of all the scripts they had received. And they were so impressed that it was a immediately rejected because, and I quote, as much as we'd want to use your script, we find that it does not match the Duke Nukem character and also that doesn't match the tone of the game. Now, I imagined two things when I heard of this. First of all, I imagined Duke Nukem as a snarky British man who wears a fedora and says cunt a lot. Now, I hate to be presumptuous, 
But that sounds fucking awesome. That is absolutely the game I'd want to be playing right now. Now, second thing I was thinking was, ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME? DUKE HAS NO CHARACTER. HE HAS THE PERSONALITY OF AN OFFICE PAPER WITH A PENIS DRAWN ON IT. And the tone of which they're so proud of is completely fucked. Let me give you an example of this. One of the first levels you're sent into is a colourful casino full of bright, pretty lights, and I do have to admit this section is somewhat entertaining. However, very shortly afterwards, you are sent into the alien hive, a fucking nightmare world. Dark tunnels, dripping stalactites, and best of all, naked, tortured women decorating the place who are screaming in perpetual agony as they are forcefully impregnated by the alien hive. And if you get too close to them, they inflate until they explode, scattering alien babies all over the place, leaving behind their bloodied remains. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. Oh, gosh. That should give me nightmares. It was so fucking fucked. It was the most jarring tonal shift since the My Little Pony special sent at Camp Crystal Lake. Fucking hell. Oh, surely there must be something good about this game. Fucking hell. I did finish it after all. Wait. What's this? Could it be? A single flake of gold hidden within this mountain of shit? My word. Oh, and it comes in the form of the shotgun. This is probably one of my favorite gaming shotguns of all time. There's a certain feeling you get when you shoot a zombie pigman in the face and watching his bloodied remains fly across the room. I think that feeling scientifically defined as freaking sweet. But it's a fleeting feeling and as exhilarating as the experience was, reality swiftly reminds you just how depressing your situation is. Kind of like when you jerk off over your favorite celebrities. Anyway, uh, moving on from that. So, We've established that Duke Nukem Forever hasn't really got much to offer as a game. However, if we go deeper, I believe that it has quite a lot to offer as a lesson. Actually, let's make it three lessons. And they are as such. Lesson one. Adjust expectations accordingly. You'd be surprised to hear that there are actually people who are excited for the release of this game. I <laughs> know, right? And they were appropriately disappointed shortly after it was. So really, stem your gushes appropriately, and you shan't have your heart broken. Now, lesson two, know when to pull out. It took 13 years to make this game, plenty of time of which to realize what you're doing, and to move on to something different and original, instead of releasing this mountain of bullshit. Which brings me to lesson three. DON'T RELEASE SHIT! 3D Realms got their balls sued off for releasing this fucking shambles, as well as making pathetically piddly profits. Anyway, this brings us to the future dystopian world of 2015. And what lessons have we learned from Duke Nukem? NOTHING! NOT. A. SINGLE. FUCKING. THING. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I um, I went to a dark place there. Anyway, um, final thoughts? It was destined to fail from the start because it fell for the modern faff affair of strictly linear, health regenerating, two weapon slot nonsense, so it could be easily digested by the lowest common denominator. And really, there is no satisfaction to be found here. Painkiller, Serious Sam, they're better versions of Duke Nukem than Duke Nukem ever was. And really, for me personally, only satisfaction I gained from Duke Nukem was when I took the game out of the console and stuck my cock through the disc. Then once I'd reached climax, I mounted the sticky remains upon my wall as a trophy. Which is funny, because that's exactly how all my relationships end. Cheery bye!